Okay, I'm going to show you how to do the graph on the Lens Lab. Um, so here's some data that, uh, that I got um, from another student. Now when I'm looking at the data, this kind of looks kind of fishy to me for image distances where you end in all zeros or a five or a zero. That just doesn't seem right, but I'm going to use this data anyway um, and go from there. So when we look at a graph, we have what's called the independent variable and the dependent variable. The independent variable is the variable that, you're, that you are changing, and the dependent variable is the one that changes as a result. So the independent variable for us is DO. So this is going to be DO, and it's measured in centimeters. And then our dependent variable would be DI. It's also measured in centimeters. And we want to fill this. Uh, this graph up as much as we can. So if you notice, um, our biggest number is 25. So I have 18 spots. So um, to, to maximize this, I could do um, every two, but then you know, I might not, 25 would be kind of right in here. That would be okay. I'm using at least two-thirds of my graph. Um, that's okay. Um, or I could do some other type of scale where I do maybe every four is equal to five or something like that. So maybe it's a little different than, than what you're used to. But I'm going to figure that out and then pause the video, come up with your, your scaling depending on your data uh, for both the X and the Y. Okay, so here's what I came up with. Um, I did every three spaces is five, and that gets me to 30 and 30, and my biggest number is 25 and 27, so I should be filling up most of my graph uh, with this. All right, so let's look at the first data point. We have a DO of 15 and a DI of 27.5. So this is how we do this. DO of 15, I'm going to put a dot here, and then I'm going to put it at the DI of 27.5, and it's right up here in the middle of these two. And on this type of graph, we're actually going to connect these two dots then. So again, this is a different type of graph that we're using. Because again, the relationship of these two to F is a 1 over this plus 1 over this equals 1 over F. So it's kind of a different graph than what you're used to doing. So that's our first one. The next one is 20 and 20. So. And then the third one is a DO of 25 and 16 and a half. So 25 here. 16 and a half would be, well, this would be 17 and a half. So basically right here. And then we have 18 and 22. So this would be 17 and a half. So 18 is just going to be right away above it. And then 22, this would be 22 and a half. So we're going to go right below it. Um, I messed that up. So that's DO and this is DI, and I did the reverse. So I'm going to erase. So my DO, and I messed that up on this one too. So let's erase those two. So this one, this 25, was wrong. It's okay to mess up. Just use a pencil. Remake this. Now we've got a 25 here for DO, and DI then is 16 and a half. Now we go 18 for DO, and we get 22. And then finally 22 and 18, so that one's, there's 15, 17 and a half, that's 18, and 22.
So there's what our graph should look like. Uh, that looks really good. So we have this intersection point, which is right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop a perpendicular line. And then we're going to drop one horizontal line this way. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read these, and these are going to be my focal lengths, these two. So this one is, if this is 7.5, and, and this is 10, so I've got roughly what? Call that 9, right in there. And then this one's roughly 11, because again, there's 15, there's 10. So, that's, so I'm going to call this 9 and this 11. So down here when I do my calculation of my average focal length okay I've got you know you can call it 9.0 centimeters and 11.0 centimeters and again set up a blank equation so we have average F equals F1 plus F2 over 2 and then you can plug those in and again, that's what we're reading. So those values that we get off of here are my focal lengths. And then you should get an average focal length of... Again, show your addition rule. So right in here, you can just show it right above, 20.0 cm. Again, good to the tenth, good to the tenth. Answer's good to the tenth. Or, I'm sorry, this now has three digits divided by this number, which is infinite, so we have three digits at the end. So this would be my, my graphical one. And then I have my mathematical one that I calculate using my values here. Again, good blank equation. Substitute. And then solve. And now, when I use this value and this, I'm looking for you to carry extra digits and underline them. Okay? So that you're using a calculated value in a calculation, and then the same thing when you're going from here down to here, you're using a calculated value in a calculation. I want to see extra digits and underline. Same thing with the 10.0. That's going to become 10.00 underline for the graphical. Again, that's what I'm going to be looking for to get full credit. Make sure you put a title. Um, what are you doing? What is this graph showing? Make sure you have the axes labeled with units, um, etc. So hopefully that helps you understand how to make this graph.